I recently received a great tutorial request by way of a YouTube comment, and it's something that I've always, well, it's a, it's a design element that I've always kind of fancied myself, but it's not something that I had ever created in Muse before, so I'm grateful for the comment, and I'm grateful for uh, the pressure to create a tutorial on this, because it really is a fantastic uh, thing to do. And what it is, is uh, you guys are familiar with rollovers, I'm sure, where you position your cursor on top of an object and you instantly get an alternate uh, appearance for that object. Uh, and I say instantly, uh, not that that's a good thing. Uh, it doesn't fade in. That's the thing. So if you want a smooth transition, uh, you don't really get it using the rollover, the typical rollover that's included in Adobe Muse. Though it's possible you've seen on other websites rollovers that do smoothly fade in. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do today. And here's an example. When I mouse over this guy here, we get a little fade with that red box that has an eyeball in it. When I fade over this guy here, we get a fade to black. And then down here, these guys fade to green. I think that's a really snazzy effect. I think it's classy. I don't think it's too over the top, but it doesn't really matter what I think. If you guys want to use it, continue watching. If you don't like it at all, uh, please change the channel. So let's get started. All right, so in this example, it's already been completed, so I'm going to switch over to this blank one where I have nothing but static images. These are just regular old pictures, no tricks up my sleeve here. If I preview it, no rollovers, nothing. These are just regular old images placed on your page. And you do want to first place the images or buttons or what have you that you'd like to add the rollover to. You want to place those on the page first in their normal state. They're just going to kind of sit there and hang out. Once that's happened, you want to come over to your widgets library panel and you want to look for compositions and find the blank composition that we used last week. I'm going to drag that blank composition onto my page and this is built into Adobe Muse. This isn't a special download or anything uh, but we'll get there. I got a surprise for you guys at the end. And then at the bottom I've got these triggers. Basically this looks like a little slideshow and it works like a little slideshow but that's not how I plan on using it. So I'm going to delete these extra two triggers because essentially I'm making a slideshow with only one slide and that's going to appear uh, by fading in and it's going to disappear by fading out. So the two parts of this, uh, the words are kind of similar so it'll throw you but we've got the trigger which is the little guy down here and we got the target which is where the content goes up here. So for this, uh, if, I, if I'm working on the one on the right where I had the red box fade in with the little eyeball, this big area up here, the target, that's where the red would be and that's where the eyeball would be. And then down here, the trigger, all this guy's job is, is to decide where the cursor is going to be when it fades in. So I'm going to have my trigger and my target both be the same area. It's going to be right on top of the photo and on top of the entire photo. So if the cursor is anywhere on the photo, it's going to hit the trigger and we'll see the target. So that's the plan. We're basically making a sandwich here of three parts. Image, followed by the red box, which will be the target, followed by the trigger on top, which is going to be, um, you could consider it the sensor for the cursor. So first I want to change a couple of settings here. I'm going to click on my little blue disclosure triangle in the corner of the composition and let's just go through these one by one here. Position stacked, that's absolutely fine. In fact, it's irrelevant because we only have one trigger and one target, so we can leave that alone. Show target, here's a big one. This needs to be on rollover because that's the whole point of this. We are building a rollover. We don't want people to have to click in order to see the fade in occur. Uh, we want that to happen the moment the cursor rolls over it. So show target on rollover, that's a must. Hide target, we want that to be on roll out. We want to hide the target as soon as the cursor rolls away from it. Now you'll notice you do have two choices here aside from none. You have on rollout of trigger and target. Now this is important if your trigger and target aren't perfectly overlapping like a, like a sandwich like we're building right now. Uh, if you have a little bit of overlap or just most importantly if your target sticks out say it sticks out above or below or, or next to your trigger area, you might want it to be that when your cursor leaves the trigger but is still on top of part of the target, that it stays there, that it doesn't fade away yet. So on rollout means as soon as you roll out from the trigger, have it fade out. And on rollout of trigger and target means when you roll your cursor away from both, when you're not touching any part of the composition, uh, have it fade back out again. Now I'm going to stick with on rollout, even though it seems like it doesn't matter, 
It actually does in this example because on rollout is very rapidly responsive. Uh, it's snappy, it's quick. Uh, on rollout of target and trigger, it lags. When you move your cursor off of it, it gives you a moment in case it was an accident, or I assume that's why, uh, but it will hesitate. It'll hesitate to fade out. So if you want it to fade out quickly, so that way everything runs nice and smooth and it doesn't look like your website has bad code, then on rollout is what you want to stick with. Trust me on that. Feel free to play with it though, of course. And then transition fading. Uh, in my example, it was a fade transition. And you might think, oh, this would be cool to do a horizontal or vertical transition, make it a little more fancy. But for some reason, when you choose one of these, you can't hide the target on rollout. I don't know why that is. Uh, it has something to do with the way Adobe Muse uh, it has been built up to this point, and this is Muse 7 that I'm using, which is currently the latest version. Maybe they'll change that in the future, but for now, you have to set it on fading if you want to hide the target on rollout, which you do if you're trying to create a rollover. And then transition speed. Uh, personally, I'm partial to 0.4 seconds for a nice brisk but still clearly visible transition. If you want to slow it down, feel free to slow it down. The higher the time, the slower it goes, uh, and vice versa. So feel free to play with that, but I'm going to stick with uh, 0.4 seconds for this example. And then autoplay, new. We don't want to autoplay because we don't want the red box to fade in before the cursor goes on top of it. So no autoplay, that's a no-no. Uh, shuffle, no, that would be more for a slideshow. Um, and enable swipe, no, we're not going to be swiping over this. It's not that kind of uh, slideshow. Now hide all initially, that is very important, otherwise the red box, it will eventually be a red box, is going to be on top of the picture the moment the page loads. We don't want it to be preloaded, we want it to load when the cursor rolls on top of it. So yes, we want to hide all initially. And we also want the triggers to be on top, because the trigger is what senses the cursor, and if that's behind something, then it won't sense the cursor when you get on top of it. Uh, it doesn't do well with layers, so the trigger's got to be on top. So that's looking good. It looks like we're in business here, and we can now start to style this thing. So what we're looking at here is the whole composition, and inside of it, again, we have the target area, which is where you're going to apply the style, and we have the trigger, which is going to determine where the cursor triggers that to appear. So the target I'm going to start with, and I'm going to get rid of the stroke around it, and I'm going to go with the color red, and I'm going to change my fill opacity to 75% so it's not completely solid. I'll ballpark it. Let's go with 76. I'll settle for that. Now the other thing that I did in my example is I did an image fill and I chose this little icon that I had laying around of an eyeball. Uh, you can fill this with whatever you want or with nothing. I chose to put an eyeball in there and I chose to center it as sort of a clue that people can click to view uh, what this image entails. But of course not a requirement to throw an eyeball in there. So I'm going to stick with that at original size and centered. We got our red at 76%. So that's looking like the style I want. And I'm going to move it over this image on the right hand side. And I'm going to make it cover the image completely. And now I've got this little trigger to deal with. If I move this over here on the right hand side uh, and overlap it a little bit, you can see it is on top, so that's good, but it's gray. It's a solid gray, which is not what I want at all. So the first thing that you guys want to do is come up here to the top left corner where it says trigger active, click on that and delete the active state, then go to rollover and delete the rollover state, then go to normal. It's very important that at the end of this you end up on normal. And when you're at the normal state, get rid of the stroke and get rid of the fill. Once you've done that, you now have an invisible trigger. And that invisible trigger can be placed right on top. This is the top bun to our sandwich. And once you've got that in place, I've now really just told this whole thing to work uh, no matter where my cursor is within this box. Uh, I've created a target the size of the trigger, and the trigger is the size of the image, so I've got a nice tight little sandwich there. Now I'm going to preview it in the browser, and let's see what we got. It doesn't show the red on load. We have it hide initially. And when I move my cursor over it, there we go. We got our fade in. It's looking good. Now, the part that you guys want to remember is that you've got to click on this and then click again to get inside of it to be able to separate the parts of the sandwich because you will have to sort of open this like a door. You have to pull the trigger aside if you want to make changes to the target because the target will be behind the trigger. 
Now if I select the trigger over here, uh, I can also set a hyperlink so that way it actually links to something when people click on it. So that way I've got a real button here because uh, because of the nature of having a trigger, you still get, let me preview this in the browser real quick, you still get the little finger, you get the little Mickey Mouse hand showing that this is a link uh, because compositions just work that way. So even if you don't put a hyperlink, it still looks like a hyperlink and now it looks like a hyperlink that doesn't work. Uh, but I'm assuming that you guys are creating these rollover effects to have hyperlinks. So just don't forget to click in here two times to select the trigger and to add the hyperlink to the trigger itself. That's where the hyperlink goes, on the trigger itself. Just remember that. So if you guys think this is a pain in the neck, then we are all in agreement on that. I think that was way too many steps, just like I did for the previous tutorial. Therefore, I have created for you guys this fading rollover moolib file that you can go and download from museresources.com. So let me pull that up real quick and show you guys where I put it. Go to museresources.com, click on the Moolibs tab, and I believe I placed it in the number one spot here. Yeah, fading rollover. That's what you're looking for. And then this tutorial link will link to this tutorial. So you can just download this. When you click on download, uh, it'll instantly throw a folder into your downloads folder, and you can open up that fading rollover Moolib file. And what that'll let you do is just drop in the sandwich that we built with all the settings already dialed in, and now we've got our target which you can place over your image and we've got our trigger which you can place either the same or elsewhere if that's what your plan is and then you're totally done uh, of course unless you want to change the style which I assume you guys will all want to do so just don't forget to slide the trigger out of the way to get access to the target and uh, you'll be good to go and of course you can come in here to the composition options and you can change the speed etc etc so you guys are in full control of this so I hope you guys like this. I hope you like the tutorial. I hope you like the Moolib file. Uh, I assume it'll save you guys a lot of time. I'm already using it for myself, and it's saving me a ton of time. So if you like these tutorials, please subscribe if you haven't already. I will have plenty more cool stuff coming soon.